people are talking about going back to normal. There is no normal, and going back to normal would be criminal. COVID-19 has clearly brought to surface the non-inclusive nature of society and the world. People of color, women, those who have been most marginalized. The disparity has never been more apparent. As ever, yet again, the people who are worst affected are those that are least able to help themselves. Here we are with this new challenge. Three months, we had 100 million more extreme poor families. 100 million and growing. Social problems, economic disparity, historical injustices, and all that creates a moment of the world is boiling. We have a moment in time right now where the problem is so stark and so severe and you can't ignore it anymore. We don't want things to go back to normal. I think this is an inflection point for real systems change. It is a crisis, but it is an opportunity because everything's been flung up in the air. In the first few months of the pandemic, the world stopped and Mother Earth started to breathe. And we tried to build on this opportunity and to show that government cooperation on the pandemic could be similarly done fighting climate change. At the very beginning of the pandemic, we went very careful through the possibilities to keep using video. We went out to film and create a web series about the impacts of the pandemic on public health in Brazil. And that inspired a lot of other video activism. Our mandate was education. Completely since COVID-19, we shifted. We tried to teach hygiene and how to do social distance, how to use masks but there's no mask, so we are producing masks by thousands. It cannot be business as usual, so we pivoted our strategy and we released the first paper in April saying what's the impact of COVID on child marriage. We were able to shift gears and to really work in a way that we had never done before. We became prevention ambassadors and we were able really to reach those at the margin. We had designed a motorcycle courier service to move samples to labs. But the moment that COVID-19 came along, they realized just how valuable it was to make sure that health workers located in rural communities, we could service them. In some ways, COVID was actually this moment where it felt like the systems and the platforms and the work that we had been doing for years was going to be needed more than ever. It forced us to reinvent ourselves very fast. A lot of the industries died. So tourism died, garment factory died. But what were the new ones? Delivery, supermarkets were booming. So we were able to replace a lot of these people into the new jobs that were coming out. We have been developing a pollution map since 2006. At that moment, we thought that it's better to develop that into a COVID map. Our organizing has been boosted because of this crisis. And we have tried to use this crisis to turn things upside down. We're working to create a generation of empowered girls and boys who are able to take control of their own lives in a very uncertain time. We are forced to automate things that are inefficient, creating a system which enables everyone to live in a disaster resilient house faster, more quickly, more affordably, more efficiently. There's something about COVID-19 and everything that is happening with Black Lives Matter that has made people start thinking about the criminalization of poverty. And that is very exciting. It feels as if this is a moment where we can reflect on what we've learned from history and apply it to now. I hope that the pandemic will demonstrate greater empathy from people around the planet. Because we've all seen what it's like to have a real crisis thrust on us that's out of our control. COVID, it shows the resilience in human nature, and it also shows the adaptability. 
it really does come back to people power, to us coming together and, and looking out for each other. I see that love and compassion is rising. When you fall, then you rise up and you do better. I really see that.